What's up YouTube? I missed you guys. Uh, it's been a while since I made a video. Uh, I've been really really busy and also I've caught the flu the past week or so so I've just kind of been chilling and so it's been a while since I did a video and I've been getting a lot of questions which I'm sorry I didn't have time to respond to with regards to all the platforms not just YouTube but uh, I decided the best way is to make a YouTube video again because that's where I can really talk about the RC car collection in depth and things like that so uh, yeah again with regards to the RS5 F1 car I've been getting a lot of questions about it um, most people talking to me about this car are, are just asking me about it because I'm a basher mostly and I bash it around but I don't really bash it in the sense of bashing for example something like the off-road models like the Lozy 5B or the Kraken or the 5T uh, it's more of a race kit which professionals really race like in the Efra series in Europe and in the large scale uh, on-road um, race series as well. So this one is an X race car. It, again, it has the Efra label and everything over here. Um, this is, for those of you that don't know, not an FG uh, model sport. This is an RS5 model sport. So it's really not designed to be driven on dirty roads or anything so when i drive it I, I take it to private roads which or a racetrack i actually take it sometimes to the same place where i actually take the race car and a lot of people get mad at me they're like why do you have a race kit and you're bashing a race car which is almost seven thousand dollars in parts and you're not you know bashing something else well the the truth is i actually do bash my cars like i said the off-road cars even the on-road cars like the mcd is a fantastic basher this one is not really a basher it's also an rs5 uh, touring car but we'll get to that later mainly the f1 car i love it because of its design i love the carbon fiber diffuser i love the use of genuine race car parts for example the materials used here are the exact same materials used in the actual v8 sr8 that i have there and Again, I do not race these per se, because not because I don't want to. I would love to race both real cars and RC cars. But the problem is where I am in Pineville, North Carolina, we don't really have any on-road tracks. And for that matter, we don't even have much off-road tracks. So I don't really know where to go. I would love to have an RC community where we can all go and have fun and maybe create our own uh, tracks and things like that. But anyways, I make do. I live in my own little world with RC cars. so. I have fun by myself I don't really have a community but it would be nice to to kind of um, see more people get into the hobby because I love cars of all sizes I love g real size one on one of one cars one of five one eight one ten 112 mini Z's one of 27 whatever it is I don't care uh, but back to the point of this car so this car is really cool because again you can see it has a carbon fiber monocoque uh, I've talked about this before but I'm just gonna do a quick uh, in-depth uh, talk about this again because again I've been asked a lot of questions and I feel like I need to answer them and also why is there a mono suspension so it's really light in the front it doesn't really need dual push rods even though that would be really cool and really realistic but lower divisions not Formula One such as Formula Renault and things like that which I've tested and driven they had mono suspension in the front so this would not be technically an F1 design um, push rod this would be more like a formula Renault or an older style f3 something like that so again very realistic very scale I another thing I love with these cars um, for example when you get hobby grade FG model sport you're paying around twelve hundred thirteen hundred dollars for a base RTR kit um, and that's without you upgrading the engine and stuff I mean some engines in these cars can cost up to depending if you go with like a Taylor RC engine or something you can go and pay two and a half thousand dollars just for one engine and you're you're not even getting to the exhaust pipe the electronics the including the battery etc the wheels the tires uh, the airbox um, and a lot of other optional carbon fiber parts that you can get for the car so anyways what I really love about this is the fact that that it has four-way hydraulic disc brakes so each wheel has an independent disc brake and caliper and this is an older version rs5 they have the new version which is the xf this one is not the xf but still i love the design of it the xf is more um kind of integrated into the newer uh design and i love it but i love the old school look this kind of looks like an older f1 car the xf 
does look like a more modern F1 car. They're both fantastic, both equally loved in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, just uh, just looking at this car, it's a specimen. I mean, I would love to race it. I would love to take it to a racetrack because that's really what it deserves. Um, all the parts here are just carbon fiber, very high grade aluminum, and the exhaust is titanium. Even the way they do the exhaust, RS5 exhaust, I mean, the welds are just lovely. And even the clutch here, things like that, they're not your standard one-fifth scale clutch. I mean, this clutch is around $150. It's got carbon fiber and aluminum shoes in it. Um, so it's not your standard, for example, $30 low seat clutch or off-road clutch, which, which can get also very expensive once you go into brands like Turtle Racing and things like, or Snapper Clutch, for example, or Probite Clutch from the MCD range. So yeah. Um, I think with regards to our with regards to the RC world, this is as realistic as it gets to an actual race car. And what's surprising to people is that I genuinely see very high quality parts in RC cars, sometimes even higher quality parts than actual real cars or the race cars. So it's it's very very cool. Um, obviously some parts there are much higher grade than this, but still it's just amazing to see the, the level of engineering and the quality that goes into kits like this, especially for fifth scale. Fifth scale really is a different animal because again, a lot of people see these kits and they're like, wow, I love your Nitro model. And I understand it's not, not everybody's really familiar in the R with the RC world. So you can easily mistake this for a Nitro model, but for an uh, experienced RC person, you would probably know from the sound it sounds like a mini dirt bike two stroke you can tell the two stroke sound from the nitro sound uh, a lot different let's say the rev range is also very different another thing what i love about these kits is that the most i would say one of the most important things not the most important things for modification and tuning is not just the gears but the actual differential the differential here this is a genuine rs5 differential you can do so much with this differential. I mean, you can adjust how much each wheel turns differently to the other. So you can adjust each wheel. Let's say you have a track which has more left-hand corners than right-hand corners. You can stiffen one side more than the other, play with it as an open diff. You can lock it. You can, you can literally tune the car completely solely by just adjusting the diff. You don't even need to play with the bias of the brakes and all that stuff. A lot of people use electronics with ABS and gyros and stuff. I don't really like that. Uh, I don't like to put electronics because I feel like they interfere with the driving and they also interfere with you getting a feel for the car. If you drive, for example, like the Arma, I have a few Arma RCs. They're brilliant with the gyros, but they really provide you with so much assist that you're not really driving the RC car anymore. You're just blasting the throttle and everything else is being done for you. But yeah, just to do a quick look at it, uh, I use premix VP race fuel um, and it's, I leave it dry once I, I put it in storage. Um, yeah, one thing I'll say about these kits is a lot of people want to get into RS5 and want to get into the race kits. And again, this is the F1 version from RS5 and this is the T13 version. Again, the older um, uh, RS5 race car and these are both X race cars which I have kind of converted into bashers, but not really converted. I just use them as bashers. And with these cars, you can really mix and match uh, different parts because you, you, you will find it pretty difficult to get parts. However, I will say this, RS5 in Germany, if you do need parts and you contact them, they're really good with getting parts and they make all their parts in house. So it's really nice and convenient. The only thing I will say about being here in the US is some parts need time and you will need to wait for the part to arrive. Okay, so I got I managed to get the body on. It's not clipped on because I don't really want to clip it on right now, but you get the idea of what I mean, like with the body details and the way it is. It's just so nice. I mean, and then I love to see the exposed carbon fiber. I The only thing uh, on the body, the rear wing is actual rear carbon fiber and there are real winglets and all that stuff. So this is all real carbon. Uh, I do make some things look like carbon fiber for example the front wing just has a carbon wrap on it uh, to match kind of the theme like i said but yeah other than that it's actually genuinely completely carbon fiber i just think in terms of scale look and behavior they just look absolutely fantastic i mean really genuinely fantastic and i'm a fan of all 
uh, terrains. I mean, off-road, on-road, uh, you have things that are literally designed specifically only for on-road, such as this, because your ground clearance is extremely minimal. And what I love about this and this and most race kits that are really low to the ground, I mean, you don't really have much clearance, but uh, sometimes when the diffuser kind of scrapes the ground with the carbon fiber and the screws, you actually see sparks flying like sparks, genuine sparks flying from under the car, um, kind of replicating when the real cars do that, it looks exactly the same. And I think that's fantastic. It's like owning a baby Formula One car, a baby race car, and being controlling it via remote control. So um, it's just very nice for someone like me who's really in love with the sport and very passionate. So this is what I love about that. And the other thing is you have things that are completely designed for off-road use that are, in my opinion, just pure monsters. They can handle any terrain. They can handle all sorts of weather, mud, grime. I mean, uh, and everything behaves differently. This one is just an absolute beast. The Lozy 5T is a monster, especially when tuned correctly. Uh, same thing with the Lozy 5B. Um, the Kraken here is more of a realistic scale trophy truck. That's a fifth scale. It's really, really realistic. And when you watch this thing drive, it's literally like watching a trophy truck behave like in the Baja 1000 or something like that. And then you have things like the MCD XR5, which is basically a rally cross car. And this thing is a beast on its own. This thing is another planet even because I drive this thing on everything. Snow, rain, dirt, tarmac, everything. This is genuinely a baby rally car a baby wrc car i've been to some wrc races and i've seen um the actual cars being driven and when i see this thing drive it's just absolutely beautiful and i do have the optional mcd two-speed gearbox here so when this thing shifts gears it's just an absolute dream and i will say this yes i know there's lots of kits that have gearboxes and all it's nothing special to have a two-speed gearbox for example this thing is a GTB Racing three-speed gearbox for a Baja 5B. But I tell you what, this Chinese crap, well, not crap, but, you know, kind of, is not as reliable as that. This gearbox here by MCD is the most reliable two-speed transmission I've ever had on any RC car. I have beat this thing. I have rolled this thing. I've, I've done everything to this car, and so far, so good. I mean, I've had it for around two years, no problems whatsoever. Uh, really, really reliable. Same goes for the rest, to be honest. But again, um, this is the only one that I have that's a fifth scale with two speed. I do know FGA Model Sport makes their sport line and they provide a two speed gearbox, but it's just not, um, it's not a race grade kit. It's more of a hobby grade kit. Maybe I'll get one of those later. Uh, I just like to use more unique chassis, more high grade chassis, more race chassis, which I use for bashing. But again, my use of the word bashing isn't your literal sense of bashing unless it's in the off-road world. When it comes to the on-road world, I really drive them in, on pristine roads. And another thing I'll say is with the on-road models, I will drive them in the rain because they have special air boxes and filters that are, that are um, compatible with the wet. And also their electronics are fully waterproof and that goes for everything here. Everything here can be driven in the rain. Um, the only thing is when you drive these things in the rain, I have the um, rain tires for them. Otherwise, you will not get traction whatsoever, just like the real thing. You will need rain tires. And what I love about the race versions is that they're all two-wheel drive. So this is not a four-wheel drive, and neither is that RS5. And neither is that RS5. Um, the one that is four-wheel drive are mostly the off-road models. So the uh, Rallycross uh, XR5 MCD, the Lozy 5B, the Kraken, and the Lozy 5T, they are all um, four-wheel drive. So yeah, um, also I have a few surprises coming soon um, from the fifth scale RC world. Um, a ton of other RC models I've been collecting and building them since I was a kid, uh, but fifth scale has really taken my uh, attention and time uh, lately because I think they're just the most uh, interesting, let's say, model. But I genuinely do love 1.8 Nitro buggies. I would love to race those, would love to get more of them. But again, um, as far as terrain goes, the best I've seen that can manage most of the situation are fifth scale off-road cars or like the Rallycross MCD. Um, 
this scale on road you still have to be very peculiar and very picky where you go uh, to, to, to drive them so yeah I hope that kind of gives a uh, very broad perspective with regards to fifth scale RC and I don't know maybe you're new to the hobby and you want to get into something you don't know what you should get into I would take those things into consideration because you don't want to end up spending so much money on a race kit that just looks amazing and I mean you can it is literally a piece of art you can just buy one of these and run it once in a blue moon and if you're happy with that of course to each his own so be it but if you really really want to use something and use it most of the time in, in, and again depending where you live if you have very clean roads and if you can have access to somewhere where you can drive it of course I think these are the pinnacle but um, as far as usability and just pure fun I am in love with the off-road range as well so yeah guys that's it for the RC stuff and again I mean I get a lot of comments on sometimes why don't I race them or stuff it's not that I don't want to it's just that I I don't really have any racetracks near me here in Pineville North Carolina and would love to have a community to do this with but they they don't really exist much here at least not that I know of and again I'm mostly focusing on when it comes to racing I'm focusing on the real thing but I would absolutely love to do both because I think they're just both wonderful uh, but again the actual thing has always been my dream so and I haven't I don't I don't sign with a team or anything I just do it when I can afford it so when I can get into a race or get into a time trial or something like that I take the monster and we go but again would absolutely love to 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 race these things and who knows maybe one day uh, go to Europe or something and race the the RC cars somewhere so we'll see that's it for today I really hope you enjoyed the video and again if there are any questions with regards to fifth scale RC or anything like that if I can help and if I can get to it I will and again my apologies if anyone has asked me anything and I forgot to reply whether it's on YouTube or whether it's on Instagram or whether it's on TikTok it's with my work with the things that I'm doing I've been genuinely insanely busy have too many things on my plate so I do genuinely apologize if I haven't gotten back to you but I do make it a massive effort to read everyone's comments and to actually go back and talk to everybody because hey if I can help you get into something productive get into something that you love it's a passion it's not just my passion it's a passion that we're meant to share with each other so I really hope that you take some of the things that I said about these cars as some helpful uh, info so yeah see you guys next time